there we go. So uh, I am so glad that all of you brothers and friends have decided to join us this evening for our very first Burlingame Scottish Rite virtual installation and our 100th officer installation for this valley. Uh, unfortunately, um, this year we are not able to meet in person and have this momentous occasion in person, uh, but we are certainly happy that we're able to get this done a different way. Uh, next year when you join us, we will be celebrating the 100 years of our Lodge of Perfection, and we promise to have a big party and bash. Hopefully by then, um, we will be able to meet in person. Um, so watch out for that, but we're so happy that you can join us this evening. Uh, a couple of uh, housekeeping rules. Um, this evening, we have several people being installed, and um, they are the only ones that will, I will be asking for a response for, and when that happens, they will respond. And when they are installed, um, and unfortunately, in person, you would give an audible clap, but there's a few different ways you can do it on Zoom. Uh, you can clap audibly or clap visually in your picture. You can give a reaction like a clapping or a thumbs up or a what they call a ta-da. Um, or if uh, some of you guys listened to me uh, and grabbed your glass for this evening, of course, no Scottish Rite event would be the same without some scotch. So I'm going to pour myself a glass here. And um, maybe we might do things a little differently. If you are very happy that that officer was installed and you're cheering for him, go ahead and take a swig. And um, but hopefully by the end of the, the installation, you will forget how long it took to get this done. Uh, and we'll be prepared to have some fellowship afterwards. Does that sound good to everybody? Great. Mm -hmm. So you're all muted. So uh, that is perfect. Uh, there will be one other portion where we will be doing a Pledge of Allegiance. Mm -hmm. And because there's so many people on here, uh, we ask that you just um, say the Pledge of Allegiance with your microphone muted um, and either audibly where you are or silently in your heart. But with that, I would like to bring up our current Venerable Master, who is going to be um, deinstalled this evening, and that is Brother Vincent Chan. The floor is yours. Let me. Thanks, I Marty. Oh, you are. All right. Let's get this uh, installation started. I'm Vince Chan. I am the current Ver Venerable Master, the outgoing Venerable Master for the uh, Lodge of Perfection. And I will just uh, got a few words to say. Um, ladies and gentlemen, brethren and friends, welcome to the Burlingame Scottish Rite 100th Annual Installation of Officers. It was my distinct pleasure to lead this valley during this year that was, is, and will always be remembered by many as when we all stayed apart to protect each other. We stayed apart physically, but remained close to each other in mind, body, and spirit. Although the physical space between us is to remain at a perpetual six feet distance for now, our hearts have never been closer. As a valley, we have demonstrated that we can overcome physical boundaries and connect in other ways. Our online presence has sometimes surpassed our in-person attendance. We have gathered other Masonic brothers into the flock of the right. Our philanthropic activities continued without pause to the betterment of all men and to glorify our Father in heaven. Armed with these thoughts to drive our valley into the Masonic year, I now take pleasure introducing the installing team. Our installing officer tonight is illustrious brother Frank Louis, 33rd degree sovereign, Grand Inspector General of the Supreme Council of the Ancient and Accepted Scottish Rite for the United States Southern Jurisdiction in California. Hey, Frank. The Master of Ceremonies tonight will be Honorable Marty Cusing, 32nd degree KCCH, personal representative of the Sovereign Grand Inspector General. That's Marty. And our chaplain tonight is Honorable Evan Brewer, 32nd degree KCCH prelate. And with that, 
I'll give the floor back to Marty. Thank you for your attention. Brother Master of Ceremonies, all the officers elective and appointed within the sanctuary. They are illustrious, sir. The first lesson we were taught on our first admission into a lodge of free and accepted masons was that we should never enter upon any great or important undertaking without first invoking the blessing of God. Let us therefore join with our chaplain in an address to the throne of grace. Sovereign author of the universe, we pay unto thee the sincere homage of our fervent gratitude for all the blessings which thy infinite goodness has bestowed upon us. We beseech thee to purify our hearts by the sacred fire of thy love and to guide us and direct us in the ways of virtue. Let peace and charity form the chain of our union. Cause us in this lodge faintly to imitate the state and condition of thy elect in thy holy and spiritual kingdom. Enable us in all things to discern and adopt the good and reject the evil. Let us not be deceived by pretended zeal and devotion, nor deceive ourselves as to our weaknesses and errors. Aid us in advancing the purposes and attaining the objects of true and genuine masonry, and thus enable us to serve our fellows and assist in carrying forward thy great design. Amen. So much be. Lester, sir, it is my honor to bring before this uh, installation, um, a couple of people from, hold on. From the Redwood City um, Assembly number 16, uh, Rainbow Girls, we have Emily and and we have Ariel. Um, and if you want to introduce yourselves before you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, please. Hi, I'm Emily Lai. I'm Emily from the Redwood City Assembly of the International Order of Rainbow for Girls. I'm the Worthy Advisor, and this is Ariel. Um, hi, I'm Ariel, also from Redwood City Assembly. I was 16 from the International Order of Rainbow for Girls, and I'm the Worthy Associate Advisor. It's and if you will join me in placing your hand over your heart and saying the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Brother Master of Ceremonies, you will pre please present in front of our altar the Venerable Master Elect, the Wise Master Elect, the Commander Elect, and the Master Kadash Elect. Thanks for bearing for with me. So um, prearranged, I asked our SGIG if I would be okay if I install my cousin, Joshua, and he doesn't know that I'm, being, I'm installing him this evening. Um, and I thought it might be a surprise because I don't have a lot of opportunity to install him into the east of any body, uh, but um, it is my honor to uh, present Joshua, Brother Joshua Kusing, 32nd degree, who has been duly elected to serve the Lodge of Perfection as Venerable Master. Honorable Brother Gary Stevens, 32nd degree, KCCH, 
who has been duly elected to serve the chapter of Rose Croy as wise master. Brother Vincent Chan, 32nd degree, who has been duly elected to serve the Council of Kadash as commander. And Honorable Brother Alan Young, 32nd degree KCCH, who has been elected to serve the consistory as master of Kadash. Brother Joshua Kusing, your brethren has seen fit to elect you to be the venerable master of Burlingame Lodge of Perfection. Before your investiture, it is necessary that you should signify your assent to certain charges and regulations which define the duty of a master of the Lodge of Perfection. Listen, therefore, and when you've heard all, please respond. You agree to respect and obey the authorities of the ancient and accepted Scottish Rite of Freemasonry, supreme and subordinate, according to their stations, to uphold the dignity and honor of the right, strictly to conform to all the edicts of the Supreme Council. You agree that an avowed atheist cannot lawfully be made a Mason, and that any higher body which receives him is necessarily not Masonic. You agree that every Mason should pursue some reputable occupation, should live decorously and decently, and should act with honor, fidelity, and generosity towards all men. You agree to be cautious to admit none but good men into your lodge, to receive no one who does not do his duty as a Blue Lodge Mason or is not of good character, intelligent, and respectable. You agree to be the advocate and supporter of good government, to submit peaceably to the will of the majority when constitutionally and legally expressed, to pay proper respect to the constituted authorities of your country and endeavor to be of service to it and the society in which you live. You promise to be impartial and upright in your seat and as master, to be modest in your carriage and behavior, courteous to all men, faithful to your lodge. Do you submit to the, these charges and promise to support these regulations? I do solemnly vow and promise. My brother, your assent to these charges and regulations justifies the confidence which your brethren have placed you and authorizes me to install you as venerable master of the Burlingame Lodge of Perfection. You are to arouse the indolent and encourage the despondent and to invite the unreflecting to do something. The influence that whereof shall be felt beyond the limits of the lodge something for the state, something for the society, and something for humanity. See to it that their masonry does not evaporate in mere words and vain professions, that they do not lay it aside when they retire from the lodge, and that their vows be not vaguely remembered and little regarded. Charge them to practice out of the lodge those duties taught in it so that they will need no other avouchment of worthy and good men, that they are masons of the ancient and accepted Scottish rite. Honorable Brother Stevens, as wise master, you are to preside at all meetings of the Burlingame chapter Rose Cry and direct his deliberations. You are to do this with dignity, but not heartily, rudely, or arbitrarily, rather with the utmost courtesy as befits one who has been elected to his office by his equals. You will see to it that a meeting is held at least annually in honor of the memory of all Knights Rose Croix who have died during the year. You will see to it that the ceremonies of remembrance renewal be conducted with proper quorum, decorum. You will never allow your chapter to be called from labor without taking a contribution for charitable purposes. You will to the utmost of your ability labor to promote peace, harmony, and good fellowship among the brethren. You will propagate and extend the principles and truth of the degree of Rose Croix, and remember that whatsoever is excellent is not to be obtained without labor or sorrow, that the work of masonry cannot be done negligently or idly, but that in this work, one must put forth all his strength. 
teach the knights to learn something more than the mere formulas and phrases of the degrees. Persuade them to, reach, to read the history and study the philosophy of masonry. Induce them to seek to learn the meanings of the symbols. Show them how, among the mass of Masonic writings, to separate the diamonds from the sands and endeavor to improve them by your conduct and conversation. Do you agree and so promise? I do so agree and promise. It only remains for me to invoke for your chapter, prosperity and continuous forever. May his knights never cease to labor successfully for the promotion of fraternal affection, charitable construction, and merciful judgment. As long as there are men wandering in darkness, and as long as there are states like great ships on stormy sea seeking safe havens, may your chapter cast its light through both storm and the dark of night to show unto each the course that leads away from danger and disaster and towards safety and salvation. Brother Chan, as commander, the work of the Berlingame Council Kadash reminds us that the names of the victims of cruelty and craft has been legion on the pages of history. Among them, Socrates, who saw the truth and persisted with questions until others were forced to answer truly. He whom an ungrateful populace forced to drink the fatal hemlock. The master of Nazareth, who preached the gospel of peace, but was derided by an angry mob, betrayed by his own disciples, and crucified. Demolay and his wardens, who were made the victims of despot and burned at the stake, and Galileo, who rashly ventured to demonstrate that the earth was not stationary or the center about which the sun revolves, and was imprisoned by those who claimed to be infallible interpreters of God's word. Yet for him, who was wiser than his time, the hemlock was distilled, the cross raised, the stake surrounded by flames, and the senseless mob loose. Remember, how, remember however, that no truth has ever been destroyed by king, priest, or mob. Reason never ceased to take an appeal from the judgment rendered by force. Power and discreet and deceit may curse the truth and call it crime, heresy, treason. They may distort and pervert it, slander and slay its teachers, but ever the sun shines by day and the stars by night, and the light does not die away from the earth. It is the martyr of truth who wins glory in our greatest respect. Who may ask who remembered the name of their executioner? Let me remind you that while masonry of the Kadash recalls the death of martyr and inculcates the principles of liberty, equality, and fraternity, it also maintains the necessity of law and order. Freemasonry rejects the notion that social evils are to correct the violation of law and prevent and private vengeance. The Kadash, as you know, have no private revenge, but say, vengeance is thine, O Lord, thou wilt repay. Honorable Brother Young, your peers and brethren of the Burlingame Consistory have been pleased to elect you to be their master Kadash. Wherever there is dignity and honor in office, there is also labor, perplexity, and grave responsibility. In masonry, as in every other order or in the state, peace and harmony the progress and prosperity of the whole will in the greatest measure depend upon the capacity and fidelity of those who govern. In all voluntary societies, the many expect the few to labor while the many look on. And to the few, this labor must often be his only reward. Expect therefore often to find yourself toiling with little assistance. One of the degrees of your body demonstrate that from the earliest of ages, Man has had a solid conviction that he has within a spiritual nature. A soul that is not to die when the body is dissolved, but is to continue to exist and may be admitted to the realms of light and life eternal. Yet another degree teaches that life is a battle, and to fight that battle heroically as well as the great as well in the great purpose of every man's existence. It is a battle wherein our intellect reason and moral sense fight against the material and the sensual. Believing that you will not faint or weary in the performance of duty, I congratulate you on your election and I do earnestly hope that you may so preside in government that it shall be found fortunate for this consistory and for the ancient and accepted Scottish right that you were elected to the office which 
you are now invested. Brother and Master Assembly, tell them the sound. You're here. <laughs> Brother Master Assembly. Be pleased to present for installation the Warden's elect, first and second lieutenant's commander elect, prior elect, and preceptor elect. Lustry, sir. I present to you for installation in the Lodge of Perfection, Honorable Brother Whitney Stevens, 32nd degree Knight Commander Court of Honor, Senior Warden elect, and Honorable Brother, uh, Senior Warden elect. Um, Honorable Brother uh, Joseph Becker. Uh, 32nd degree Knight Commander Court of Honor, Junior Warden Elect. In the chapter of Rose Croy, Brother Yelmar Nielsen, 32nd degree Senior Warden Elect. And Honorable Brother Walter Enchetta, 32nd degree, Knight Commander, Court of Honor, Junior Warden Elect. In the Council of Kadash, um, let's see. Uh, Brother Jim Cutsinger, 32nd degree, Second Lieutenant, um, there you go. Uh, Second Lieutenant Commander Elect. And in the Consistory, Uh, Lestrius brother, David Dianita, 33rd degree, prior elect, and one more here, <laughs> brother Shanzo, 32nd degree, preceptor elect. Brethren, your offices are next in importance to that of the presiding officer of your body. Remember that the efficiency of an executive always must depend upon that of his lieutenants. If the latter are incapable, unfaithful, or lukewarm, his labors, besides being largely and unjustly increased, will to a great extent prove unavailing. You have it in you, in your power to secure the harmonious cooperation of all in advancing the great purpose of the ancient and accepted Scottish rite. In the absence of the chief of your body, you will succeed to higher duties. Your acquaintances with the statue of, the, of our Supreme Council with the history, and I lost my page here. Top of page eight. No, it all went blank. It all went white. Oh, no. Yeah. Hang on. Hang on. Try this way. I especially give it to you in charge to reconcile the dissension. Should any arise among the fellow soldiery of the Holy House at the temple, teach the brethren by precept and example to bear the infirmities of each other and especially beware of obstinacy and pride of opinion and out which grow most difficult among men and masons. You may be seated. Here, here, brother. Brother Master of Ceremonies, you will present for installation the Order Elect, Chancellor Elect, Minister of State Elect, and Almoner Elect. Illustrious Sir, I present to you for installation Illustrious Brother Chris Smith, 33rd degree, Orator Elect. Brother Ross Chassie, 
32nd degree chancellor elect for the Council of Kadash and Brother Todd Birnbaum, 32nd degree chancellor elect for the consistory. Brother Patrick Bailey, 32nd degree chancellor elect. Uh, oops, I might've written that wrong. Um, for the consistory. Um, sorry, minister of state for the consistory. And Honorable Brother Roberto Diaz, 32nd degree Knight Commander, Court of Honor, Almoner elect. Brother Order, the title of your office is descriptive of your function. It will be your duty when requested by the master of your body to present a lecture upon the history, philosophy, or symbolism of the order. It is indispensable, therefore, that you should make yourself familiar with these subjects so that you'll be able to instruct and enlighten the brethren and that your addresses may be worthy. Brother Chancellor, as the title of your office indicate, you are counselor or legal officers of your respective bodies. It is your duty upon request of the commander or master of Kadash, respectfully, to give him your opinion as to the constitutions, statute, and bylaws of the fraternity. It is essentially necessary that you yourselves be familiar with our laws and regulations. Brother Mass Minister of State, you also are a counselor to the Master Gadash. It is your province to pronounce discourse upon such subject and on such occasion as may be directed by competent authority. I need not enlarge upon the necessity of diligence and study. The symbols of masonry are not fixed dogma, but images of infinite interpretations. Masonry is not encompassed by a certain routine and a few words of catechism. Remember that one does great injury to Freemasonry if he accepts an office and then neglects his duty. Brother Almoner, the brethren of these bodies have seen fit to select you to dispense their charity. Few men look upon distress and suffering without emotions of sympathy and pity, but few are instant in seeking these out that they may relieve them. That which is the common duty of all is oft too often neglected by many. Also, the most deserving cases of need and destitution are often those who seek concealment and suffer in silence. It is your particular duty to seek out worthy objects for the charity of our bodies, to visit the home of the sick, the widow and orphan, and to minister to them comfort and consolation belongs to the mission and duties of masonry and is that which man most resembles God. You may be seated. Brother Master of Ceremonies, you present for installation the treasurer and secretary. Illustrious sir, I present to you for installation illustrious brother. David Jelliff, 33rd degree, secretary elect of the Lodge of Perfection and Chapter of Rose Croix, recorder of the Council of Kadash and registrar of the consistory. I also present illustrious brother David Jones, 33rd degree, treasurer of the Lodge of Perfection, Chapter of Rose Croix, Council of Kadash, and the consistory. Illustrious brother Jolliff. I have appointed you to be the Secretary of the Lodge of Perfection and Chapter Rose Croy, Recorder of the Council of Kadash and Registrar of the Consistory. It will be your duty to keep the minutes and accurately record all the transactions of the bodies, receive and take charge of all the papers that are to be laid before them, make out and transmit all returns and reports to the Supreme Council. Accuracy and punctuality are qualities which your office particularly require. I am confident that you will perform your duties as to merit the esteem and thanks of your brethren. Illustrious Brother Jones, I have appointed you to be the treasurer of these bodies. It, is, it will be your duty to receive all monies from the secretary, 
make due entry thereof and pay them out by order of the Lodge of Perfection. Nothing so certainly result in the ruins of Masonic body as confusion and disorder in his financial affairs. For by such his energies are crippled, his good intentions defeated, and his debts increase, and dissatisfaction and ill feelings are bred among his members. Slight irregularity and trivial relaxation lead at last to grave offenses. Your faithful relaxation lead at last to grave offenses. Your faithful performance of your duties will entitle you to be the good opinion and gratitude of your brethren. You may be seated. You're here, brother. Brother Master of Ceremonies, be pleased to present for installation the appointed officers of each body, announcing their name and respective offices. Master Sir, I present to you for installation the appointed officers for the Lodge of Perfection, Honorable Brother Evan Brewer, 32nd Degree Knight Commander, Court of Honor, Prelate Elect. I pre a Prelate. 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 This one's going to make my fingers fall off. Um, we have Brother Gary Swide, 32nd degree, Master of Ceremonies. He went home. Uh, we have Brother Jason Kusing, 32nd degree, expert. We have Brother John or sorry, Aiden Cotter, 32nd degree, assistant expert. Brother Robert White, 32nd degree, captain of the host. Brother Jack Burroughs, 32nd degree, organist. And last but not least, Brother Martin Chavez, 32nd degree, Tyler. For the chapter of Rose Qua, we have Brother Reynaldo, Reynaldo Harold, uh, who is doesn't have his video on, but uh, he is here. Thirty second degree Master of Ceremonies. He's shy. I think so. Mm -hmm. And Abe, who doesn't have his video on as well, Rafanon Junior. Thirty second degree expert. Brother Dennis Silva, who also doesn't have his video on, 32nd degree assistant expert, and Brother uh, Emilio Elenea, 32nd degree guardian of the temple. For the Council of Kadash, we have illustrious brother Froilan Anchetta, who does not have their video on also, uh, Master of Ceremonies, Brother... Fernell Endong, 32nd uh, degree, first deacon. And for the consistory, don't fail me now, Brandon um, Duenas, brother, honorable brother Brandon Duenas, 32nd degree, KCC, um, Knight Commander, Court of Honor, Marshal of Ceremonies. My brethren, it is necessary that every nation should consider that since God has given him an excellent nature, Wisdom, the power to choose between good and evil and an immortal soul. He has also appointed him a work and service great enough to employ these ability and has designed for him a slate, a state of life to which he can only arrive by service and obedience. The service of the holy house of the temple is no idle task, and the practice of Messiah duty is no life of ease and indolent contact in which one sees the evil and worlds, wrongs of the world and yet does nothing. Each mason were he but an apprentice must have, his, have the right to put his hope in God and that right he cannot have unless he so works as to deserve God's favor. All the officers. Brethren, the progress and advancement of the ancient and accepted Scottish right will hereafter in this valley depend chiefly upon you and your successors. This is the age of political conflict, individualism, material interests, speculation, 
overreaching and servitude to mammon. Simple ideas of a brotherhood which requires no sacrifice or of a morality in which there is nothing new cannot move the world. The masonry of today cannot be inactive, fitful, or poorly directed. Masonry has always been on trial with the world as judge and the ages as juror. It may be, a, a, it may be that another great epoch is approaching which will profoundly affect the destiny of the human race. An immense field arena of action lies open to sky strike masonry, inviting it to assume the apostolate of civil and religious liberty and universal, universal brotherhood. It is for you, my brethren, each in his proper sphere to arouse masonry to a sense of the great and grand part that masons ought to play in the world's affair and of the necessity of united effort. Each of you will place his right hand over his heart and repeat silently after me. I solemnly promise and vow that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the Supreme Council of the ancient and accept the Scottish right of Freemasonry for the Southern jurisdiction of the United States of America. And that I shall to the best of my ability perform the duties of the office which I have been invested. You may lower your hand. In the name of the God of loving kindness and under the auspices of the Supreme Council of the Inspector General of the 33rd degree of the ancient and accepted Scottish right of Freemasonry for the Southern Jurisdiction of the United States, Mother Council of the World, I do proclaim that the officers who stand around the altar to be duly installed. Congratulations, my brother. Venerable, I leave it to you. Illustrious, thank you for that. And um, for those that would like to give a cheers to all the officers that were installed, this would be the perfect time. Here, here, brother. At this time, we're going to move on with our installation and bring up our uh, newly installed venerable uh, for the installation of our Knights of St. Andrew. Take it away, Venerable. Milk, milk. Yeah, so sorry. Technical you know, difficulties. This, I know this is a new seat for you. So yeah, you have to hit the unmute button. Okay, love you too. Here we go. Good nights of St. Andrew from the north, south, east and west, gather for the installation of officers. Sir, knight, master of ceremonies, proclaim them and let them all be received into the presence of this assembly. Venerable Knight, by your command, Knights Chris Advincula Jr., 32nd degree Knight of St. Andrew, Knight Martin Chavez, 32nd degree, Knight of St. Andrew. Knight Abe Rafanan Jr., 32nd degree, Knight of St. Andrew. And last but not least, Knight Dennis Silva, 32nd degree, Knight of St. Andrew. Knights, as you're aware, King James of Scotland formed the Order of Knights of St. Andrew in 1440. These knights are descended from the Order of the Thistle and the order that dates back to the Battle of Bannockburn in 1314. It was at this battle that the cadre of mysterious knights aided by Robert the Bruce, King of Scots, in defeating the English army of King Edward II these knights are believed to be remnant of the once respected order of the Knights of the Temple, who were undergoing persecution by Pope Clement V and Philip the Fair, King of France. It is said that the exiled Knights Templar were not only given sanctuary by Robert the Bruce, but that many of them became members of the Order of the Thistle, fighting beside uh, the Bruce to ensure Scotland's freedom. 
This tradition of defending freedom against injustice, as well as the other knight's virtues are passed down to us from these early origins. And as officers of the Knights of St. Andrew, you will be asked to aid your fellow knights in continuing this tradition in this coming year. Sir Venerable Knight, please attend these officers and administer their oath. Sir Knights, Chris P. Advincula, Abe Rafanan Jr., Martin Chavez, and Dennis Silva. Raise your right hand and prepare yourselves to take your oath of office. The motto of the Knights of St. Andrew is service with honor towards wisdom. In the coming year, do you swear to uphold this motto through your thoughts and actions? I swear. In the in this coming year, you will be entrusted with the well ruling of the Assembly of the Knights of St. Andrew. Do you swear to do so with honesty and integrity? I swear. In the coming year, you will be representatives for the Knights of St. Andrew to both Masonic organizations and the general public. Do you swear to do so with the proper humility, taking pride in maintaining the dignity and reputation of the Knights of St. Andrew? I swear. I swear. Do you submit to all these and do you promise to observe and practice them faithfully? I swear. I promise and swear. Then I shall install you into your respective office. Brethren, you may lower your hands. Sir Chieftain elect, stand forward. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Sir Chieftain, I give you this feather, gold in color, that signifies your rank. Place it in your hat so that your fellow knights may recognize you. Looks nice. And give you the respect of authority and I shall install you into your office to preside over the Valley of Burlingame Knights of St. Andrew. Sir Knight, Master of Ceremonies, you will make the proclamation. To all here assembled, I present to you our new officers of the Knights of St. Andrew for the coming year and proclaim them to be do so to all our knights and brethren in the north, in the south, in the east, and in the west. Sir Chieftain, I present to you the sword of the chieftain to keep and protect until you bind your successor in office. Of course, I'll keep this for you. <clears throat> well, with that being done, it is time for my speech. I actually planned my speech 
uh, for weeks on end, I couldn't decide what to write. And I actually decided that I wrote a whole lot of things, but I'm not gonna go through that. So anyways, thank you very much for joining us in our 2021 installation of officers. I would like to thank everybody, especially our SGI, SGIG illustrious Frank Louis for being our installing officer. And of course, Honorable Marty Milford Cousing, 32nd degree Knight Commander Court of Honor as my installing officer and master of ceremonies. Thank you very much for that. I was really surprised. I didn't really expect it. It is always a treat when my cousin installs me. And of course, thank you very much to Honorable Evan Brewer, 32nd degree Knight Commander Cross of Honor for being our installing chapter. 2020 was a tough year for all around. We understand that certain things had to be changed and certain things that we normally do could not be done. With that being said, we are looking forward to 2021. We are looking forward to it as a better year, as a year where we could accomplish a whole lot of the different things that we set forth in 2020 to accomplish. One of the few things, just as, just as the highlights, is that Berlin Game Scottish Rite will want to do a little bit more community involvement so that we will be partnering up with our local food banks and local charities. I do see that we do have uh, members of the Lions Club Bay Area Global Outreach with us today. And I would like to say that I do plan to have events with you as the year goes by. That way we can work together and do something better for our community. Now, another thing as well is that I challenge each and every brethren of Burlingame Scottish Rite to find other worthy Master Masons to join our ranks. Always remember, Burlingame Scottish Rite has always been called a small but mighty valley. Let us continue that tradition and be one of the strongest, mightiest valleys in the Orient of California. I am the leader this year. However, I cannot accomplish any of this without each and every one of you standing beside me and doing this with me. So I appreciate each and every officer that actually stepped up and decided to join us and be a part of the line for 2021. I look forward to working and I look forward to seeing what we can ac accomplish together. I congratulate you all. And with that being said, I'm cutting my speech short so that we can continue with our night. However, we do have, I would like to thank everybody who took the time to come to join us in this Zoom meeting. I would like to say that we appreciate each and every one of you, Masons, brothers, sisters, friends, and family. We thank you all. And to break with tradition a little bit, I decided I was going to do a little bit of fun. And I might do it spectacularly, 
or flame out wonderfully. So we will see. To our Filipino friends, Magandang gabi, mga kaibigan. Maraming salamat po. I hope makikita ko kayo uli. At mamaya, meron tayong karaoke. Baka. To our Cantonese friends and guests. Ho to tsele. Tingyat. Neitongo. Yatsai. Sekfan. Totse. To our Norwegian friends, I know we have a few. Tusen takskala. Visnakis. Gubed ring. And of course, we do have some Japanese friends as well. Konnichiwa tomodachi. Domo arigato gozaimasu. And uh, I'm running out of languages here, okay? So uh, one last language. To our Spanish friends. Hola, como estas, compañeros? Muchas gracias, hermanos, herma, hermanos. Venerable hermano Roberto. Tranquilo, hermano. At least he tried. Very good. I, hey, I had a whole lot of help from a whole lot of brothers and sisters for me to actually figure all this out. I will leave all to it to all of you to decide which of the languages I'm the weakest on. And of course, no Masonic function is complete without introductions of dignitaries. First off, illustrious Mike Salazar, 33rd degree, General Secretary of the San Francisco Scottish Rite. Thank you for being here tonight. Put your hat. <laughs> In the locker. Hips at home. I, smart guy. <laughs> Honorable Rich Campbell. 32nd degree, Knight Commander, Court of Honor. Personal representative for the San Francisco Scottish Rite. Thank you for being here. Brother Ed Del Rosario, 32nd degree, Venerable Master Elect, San Francisco Scottish Rite. Thank you for being here. Illustrious Ken Nagel, 33rd degree, personal representative of the San Jose Scottish Rite. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Josh. Congratulations. And illustrious Christopher D. Smith, 33rd degree, chairman of the San Francisco and Berlin Game Childhood Language Center. Thank you for all that you do. Thank you, Venerable. And of course, I would like to introduce a dear brother and dear cousin of mine, Honorable Marty Melford Cousin. 32nd degree, Knight Commander, Court of Honor. Our personal representative for Berlin Game Scottish Rite. Before anything else, thank you very much for also being our technical person tonight. Uh, please give him a round of applause. Thank you and please 
give us some of your remarks. Well, thank you, Venerable Master. Uh, it's nice seeing that. Um, and well done doing this virtually for our very first time. Uh, as many of you don't know or don't know, Joshua and I have been going around the state and installing different bodies together, either as the installing officer or marshal or one or the other um, in many of the different Masonic bodies. I think we're very close to about 30 in this um, installation season. Uh, this will be our last big one and all the other ones we get to sit back and watch. I, I can't wait for that. And then of course there's qualification season coming up right after that, I guess. Um, well, thank you again, brethren, for joining us. This is our 100th year uh, for our installation of officers and what a special event it is to, for you to join us um, because one, it being virtual and us never doing it before and two, um, well, I guess a big two, uh, Joshua and I, and then none of the other officers, of course, Frank never needs practice, but uh, we didn't practice this at all. We gave a call to each other and we said, hey, you do this, you do that. Great, we're done. Uh, so we pulled it off. Congratulations, can't wait to see the rest of your year. Uh, hopefully uh, when we do get to time that we can uh, come back together, we may have some maybe dinner dances or other sort of events. Uh, but certainly we will try to at least virtually uh, visit some of the other valleys in the area. Uh, I know you and I and many of the other officers here at Burlingame made a big commitment to at least uh, support our Masonic youth in our area, uh, which is why the Rainbow Girls came to present the flag. One of our um, Masonic youth that we support here uh, in the Burlingame area uh, it's important that the youth especially are able to function uh, while um, not being able to meet in person. And it looks like they're doing really well. Uh, I've been, Joshua and I have been to many of their events online and their meetings, um, and they're doing a lot of fun things. And, and actually we're learning a lot of great things, their activities and, and uh, games. So I do encourage any of you that have the time on those nights uh, to join one of them. Uh, they're always looking for people to come mentor them, give them uh, their experience, both Masonically and uh, in their career choices that they may have in the future. Uh, well, I don't want to take up too much time uh, of your night because uh, we do have, you know, some more um, unscheduled toasting at the end. Uh, but at this time, I would like to call on our uh, illustrious brother, Frank Louis, 33rd degree, Sovereign Grand Inspector General of the Supreme Council of Ancient and Accepted Scottish Rite for the United States Southern Jurisdiction in California to grace us with any words of wisdom. Very few words. First of all, congratulations to the officers of Burlingame Scottish Rite, the Valley, and uh, continue to work with you. Anything you need, don't ask, you know, just tell, tell Josh to do it. <laughs> but I offer you my support. My door is always open, and we look forward to working with each other. And also, a word to Mike Salazar, my computer quit working on me. <laughs> all, all the black ink on the screen went white. Need a new computer. He uh, has it. He has it. <laughs> Otherwise, it, it, it's my, it's it's because we were working on it, Frank. Okay. <laughs> okay. Otherwise, my congratulations to you, Josh, and the officers of Burlingame. Thank you. Cheers. Well, brethren, ladies and guests, now comes the time that this concludes the installation of officers. Let us join with our chaplain in a benediction to the throne of grace. Great architect of all that is, as we close our assembly this evening and leave this virtual place to travel upon our various paths of life, let us be resolute and strong of purpose. May we always remember to live simply, care deeply, love generously, forgive freely, and to pray daily in the sincere hope that by doing so, we might take comfort 
secure in the knowledge that your steady hand is upon our shoulder, ever guiding us toward the light of your truth, allowing us to face the world with courage and hope, and to prepare for whatever change that may await us. Amen. Perfect. Exactly one hour. <laughs> we are officially dismissed. Thank you.